Welcome back, everybody, to the Joe Mo Show. It is time for football therapy. So sit down, relax, and let's have a therapy session together. Let's talk about week one of the NFL. Let's talk about the Lions. We'll get into picks, the picks for week two and all of the great, great stuff. So we'll start off with the Lions and the Rams. Obviously, the Lions will win at 26-20 in overtime at Ford Field against Matt Stafford, who got another beating from the Lions' defensive line. And the Rams also got beaten up on by our big boy, David Montgomery. It, the, the game was, I knew it was going to be tough, especially um, given that, um, at least at the time, um, Cooper Cup and Nakua were healthy and they were cooking. And specifically Cup. And for, and for whatever reason, and I, I, the defensive philosophy, I'm not in tune with necessarily, but the soft coverage, giving up the short yardage, Const the 22 targets, I believe, to Cooper Cup, a lot of them in the flat. It just, it was weird to see because it felt like we were giving up so many yards, but we never, we gave up maybe one big play out of all of that. So, I mean, just kind of like trying to understand the, the defensive philosophy for Aaron Glenn was like, okay, did you not just want to give up the big play and make sure that everything stays in front of you? Like, and I guess it worked because at least at halftime, they only had a field goal. It would have been a touchdown if not for Kirby Joseph camouflaging in the end zone, uh, picking off Stafford uh, right before uh, halftime. But as ugly as it is, I guess it works. Um, especially when you got the offense that we do, you can kind of make up for that. If you slow down, not stop, but if you slow down the opponent's offense, our offense is good enough to um, outpace that. I, I guess that's gonna. I guess that's what the philosophy is. It ended up working, so I can't really complain. Obviously, the rookie corners are going to be rookies, and I'm starting with the negative before I get to the positive. But I mean, it's kind. Of, I kind of was predicting that going into this game, where it's like we got a new secondary, especially you know, Terry and Arnold. He had a bad PI penalty in the end zone, but like he's a rookie in his first game. It, it takes a little bit for corners to get used to the position, to get used to going up against the talent that they do. Even if you do go to Alabama, like you're getting like it's not NFL talent, you know it's it's going to take some time for the rookie corners to become regular corners as opposed to rookies. So that that was going to happen. Otherwise, Hutch was awesome. Um, just constantly like he, is as not flashy as it was. You, you could tell he was affecting plays. You could tell he was affecting the quarterback. You could tell hit. That he was doing all he could. Could he have used a little bit more help? Sure. But, you know, when DJ Reader comes back, I'm sure that's going to open up a whole lot of things on the defensive line. So it, it, it ended up working for now. It was close, but it ended up working. And a, another, I got just random bullet points here. Another strange thing that I thought was like, now Jamison Williams had a fantastic game. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but strange to see. I'm going to run St. Brown not having such a great game. And it just from watching it, like it had to have been the Rams defense focusing on him. Why wouldn't you, if you're a defensive coordinator, not focus on taking away I'm going to run St. Brown. And if Jamison Williams is going to you know, live up to the training camp hype, is it naturally just going to take away from St. Brown? Is he not going to get like the 1,510 touchdowns like he did last year? Like, is that is just gonna that gonna be a matter of sharing the ball? Not a bad problem as long as the offense scores. I, I I don't have any Lions on my fantasy team or nothing, so I could care less as to who scores uh, for the Lions. So I mean, may, maybe this is just kind of a maybe more of an extreme example, but an example as to nope the new offense, the new target share uh, for the Lions. But you know, everyone, even the coaches, were in. You know, the Lions themselves were saying, yeah, we probably could have given him the ball more. So um, so it, it is what it is. Not a bad thing. We ended up still winning the game. Now the good stuff. Okay, I got all my negativity out. The good stuff, man. Montgomery is a freaking bulldozer. I And I am embarrassed to remember when we got rid of uh, Jamal Williams and... I remember being sad about it. Even when we got David Montgomery, I was like, man, but 17 touchdowns, you know, and 
and anime and um leader of the hidden village of the dead he was so he was so fun i loved the guy you know a player with a personality i i really appreciate you know it's it's something where like especially for media you know especially for folks like me who are like are a little more in tuned into like how media works and how difficult it can be for some players to see them to, to see players like Williams and and also like Campbell and St. Brown and Goff and in commercials now I, I appreciate a, just a little bit of personality to it so I was I was sad to see him go but like as soon as I turned on David Montgomery highlights I'm like oh he's just like he could do everything Williams could and a lot more like he he is like David Montgomery is just like the running back that you want. He can do everything. You saw in the in the Chargers game last year that while not that often, he could break one loose. You know, he can run down the sideline if Jamo's there blocking for him downfield like he can break one loose and he can absolutely sledgehammer you. And it was just so cool to see in that overtime drive. Thank God we had the coin flip on our side, but the dude was mauling them. That offensive line was mauling them, the Rams. And he's just everything you want. He makes moves. He he breaks tackles. He's powerful but shifty. He's just the best. I love Monty. And even him, he's a funny guy too. Like I, I appreciate that as well. So to just to see him have his monster game. And again, I don't have Lions... Uh, I don't have my Lions on fantasy roster, so I don't care the split between him and Gibbs. As long as they work, as long as they score, brother, I'm good. I'm good. And the Lions were good. And we kill them with it. And someone, and like we mentioned before, Jamison Williams getting a buck 20 plus and a touchdown. Now, now there's some, there were some moments where I'm like, okay, dude, you got to kind of catch it with your hands sometimes. But if if we can make it work for him, if we could throw it at his chest, um, that's awesome. That's lethal. That is so is such a deadly combination to have a receiver that can be the deep threat. It, it could be everything that we were talking about during the offseason, can be the deep threat downfield and balance that with short distance, more more short, shorter mid mid-range game of St. Brown and Laporta. You you can either take JMO away and deal with those two, or you can take those two away and deal with JMO, regardless of the running game. You know, it it's such a pick your poison. It's such a juggernaut of an offense roster wise with the old line. It's like I was nervous about the receiving room. I mean, I still have some nervousness for the receiving room in terms of depth, but the top to bottom from the Lions offensive roster, there's not really a weakness. There's relative weaknesses, but like there, there's not a, a huge hole in our offense anywhere. You can get it done however you want it. And Ben Johnson can get it done any way you want it. You want it well done? You want it medium rare? We got you. We're going to cook it anyway. So it, it was just so cool to have that on display as much as the offense was like had trouble getting going and has improvements to make. Dude, that offense is going to cook all season long, and I'm so excited for it. So overall, it was a really fun. Overall, it was a really fun game. I'm just so happy that the Lions are back. I'm happy football's back. It just, it feels right. It's just it. I'm I got so sick of off season talk and off season topics that it's just so nice to finally have football back. To have real football back. Uh, so that one was a lot of fun. So now final segment of football therapy will be a thoughts going into the Lions and the Bucks. So the Bucks are coming, like you want to talk about a team that's coming off of, of an impressive win or of a confidence boosting win. Uh, the Bucks are one of them. And it's not so much that um, it's because they beat like, you know, they didn't beat the Chiefs or anything, but, you know, to show that, hey, we can score. We have an offense. We are quarterback is ready to roll, you know, and they played us tight in the playoffs last year. Don't forget, like, it wasn't a blowout in the divisional round of the playoffs. Like, the, the Bucks team is good, I believe. And, you know, they're, they're, 
maybe a nine win team like that, like kind of like could make the playoffs kind of good. So I'm not like uber confident that the Lions can take this one. I I'm predict I pick they will. I believe they will. But I think this one is also going to be a close one. Maybe not an overtime close one. Um, but to, you know, and, and we'll think about it in this headline. Do the Lions repeat their two playoff wins at, to start off their next season? Does Todd Bowles make any improvements from that divisional round game? Because there was moments where he just kind of gave up and like didn't try. Um, I forget exactly what moment it is, but like there, I think there was a chance where they could have kicked a field goal or they could have tried to get some points up, but they just kind of wasted time and just kind of gave up on the game. I think there is improvements that the Bucs can make in terms of this matchup. I still think the Lions, with that enormous home crowd, will be able to do it. But I think it'll be close. Mike Evans and Godwin, another big receiving duo that are rookie corners and kind of fresh secondary might have some trouble with. Are we going to force them to dink and dunk again? Will it be enough? Will Mike Evans be enough of a threat downfield to even though we don't give up the big play and we don't, we try not to give up the big play. Does that happen anyway? Does Baker go over the top with Evans in the end zone? You know, that could happen. So all that being said, it'll be close, but the Lions will win it because we gritty, baby.